Hello, welcome to my room. This is my third room in three years and I'm in an apartment this year. I'm not living on res. Um, and for anyone curious, basically the main reason why I'm not living on Trinity res this year is because it's less common for third and fourth years to stay on residence. Um, and I thought it would be a fun new adventure. Um, but I really, really miss living on res. I really miss living on campus. It's just a different vibe. So anyways, if you guys were curious about that, that is why that is my new room. Um, maybe I'll do a room tour, although it's a pretty tiny room and there's not much to tour. Um, but I can do an apartment tour maybe one day. We'll see. So anyways, this video is going to be just a quick little back to school haul. It's a mini haul. I didn't get many things. I didn't need many things. Um, and yeah, so let's get into it. The one thing I can't live without at U of T other than my laptop are my Muji pens. I went to Muji, I think I've been twice in the past two months, but yesterday I went again. I needed more pens and I just got four more of my all time favorite pens. These are the only black pens that I use. I use them for journaling and I use them for school. Um, so I go through them quite quickly. And this is sort of like what it looks like on paper. I really like the, um, like just the flow of the ink as well as the color and the design of the pen themselves. Very simple. I just really like the shape, everything about it. I'm now attached to these pens and I never use any other type of pen. So I just got four and I always get 0 0.38. It's the smallest nib size. Um, I find the others to be too thick. So got some of these more stationary. I randomly was in Indio and saw these and it reminded me of being a little kid. I used to beg for like glittery pens like this. So I got, I actually got a green one too, but I don't know where it went, but I got green, blue, and yellow, just like these glittery pens by, I think the company is called Sakura and it's a Japanese brand. And then I just got more of my favorite colors of the um, Vibra Mild Liners. Um, again, just like the Muji pens, I'm attached to them. They're the only ones that I will buy or use. And I've had the Mild Liners for probably like three or four years now. This is the first time that I've had to buy like duplicates. And it's just because I use these colors the most. I love this shade of blue that they have. And then this is a new yellow that I get, that I just got, but normally I just use like the golden yellow. And then I got the orange. And then also from Muji, I got um, more of the just normal notebooks. They're super cheap. You get a pack of five or six, and I really like the size and the quality of the paper. And I like that the lines are very thin and faint I generally hate lines. Something in my mind, I really don't like the look of lines and I don't like when lines are really thick, but these, I really like to take um, class notes in these books. And so I got a few more of those. Also for Muji, I got this yesterday. I got this little pocket note notebook. Um, and like I said, I love blank and this is blank. Um, I honestly, again, I didn't really need this, but I thought it would be nice to have just like a little pocket notebook and I was, just this morning, I was writing down the readings I needed to do today. Um, and like with all Muji paper products, the paper is such an interesting texture. I also picked up another one of these notebooks. So I'm not going to lie, this notebook is kind of expensive for what it is. It was $7 at um, Indigo. This is again made in Japan, but I actually don't even know the brand. It's really beautiful. I like how antique it looks. I'm not sure if this is called a composition notebook. I don't think it is. Um, and again, like the paper is just really smooth. It has that Muji paper feeling. And then another notebook I got is this one. My mom got this for me. It was in a pack of three. She kept two of them. I kept, I got this one. And it's by a brand called Nota. And I think it is like branded with Indigo. Mm, yeah. And it's just nice to have like a hardback 
little notebook. Um, and then I also got this notebook. I think it's so cute. I got it from HomeSense. Um, I like that it has a little pocket area. And then um, it's spiral. I don't typically like spiral notebooks, but I really like how pale the lines are and the paper feels really nice. I think it'll be good for taking notes. And then finally, this is the last um, like notebook I have. I have three more of these and they're made in Italy. The brand is called Piece, I think. I don't know how to pronounce that. And um, they're really just like a cute little like foldy little notebook for more random things. Not gonna be for class notes. And then I also wanted to show you guys this because I think having a good planner sets you up for success when it comes to university. Um, I love having a paper planner. I religiously use the Apple calendar um, I find that to be so helpful. I think they call it the iCloud calendar, I'm not sure. But I also use a paper one. So this one is from a brand called Papier, which is a British company. And um, I love them and you can get them personalized. So this one has my name on it. Maybe I'll show you February. You can see I write assignments um, in it and like appointments, major things that I need to keep track of. Um, I use my Apple calendar on my computer for like classes and such things. And then I'm trying to show you how I use it on like a daily. Um, I would write, I just write like to-do lists in it. It's nice to keep track. Like, okay, if I have Latin American history on Tuesday, well then I need to do the readings by this day. Um, so, so I'm back. My phone was tweaking. But anyways, as I was saying, the jury is still out on whether a spiral planner is better than a bound one um because they both have their merits and their drawbacks so that's up to you to decide and then the last part of my little haul for now because i have a special delivery coming um in a few days are my textbooks that i got i only got three so first book i got is a man of good hope so this book is one of my required readings for my histories of the horn of africa class so it's a immigration story or it's a refugee story i should say about someone from somalia but i haven't read it yet so i'm not entirely sure like what it is so i got two books for that class so far um this one is the source book so it's with um primary sources that we're going to be analyzing and as i said i think it's for my crime and punishment in the early modern world class and then this one is a short history of European law, um, also for that class. But there are still books I need to get. But that is what I have thus far. I think I showed you guys my laptop stand, which I'm very excited about. This is gonna be so amazing for me. Hello, and welcome back. So I got the final little piece of this back to school video. I got a new iPad. <laughs> this is so exciting. Um, so this is the iPad 10th generation and my mom picked out the color for me and she got me blue. Blue is my favorite color so she picked very well and I'm just in love with the shade of navy blue. I think it is literally beautiful but yeah I'm so happy with it and I've already had it all set up and it has touch ID which is fun because my other one Oh, I guess my other one did have Touch ID, but it was like, they had the center button. Um, I have GoodNotes set up for school. GoodNotes is pretty much the only app that I use an iPad for, and it is integral to how I study at university and how I do class and class notes, everything. Um, I just use it so much, and I'm just so happy to have a new iPad. It's really... Um, I'm very grateful that I have a new one. And it's perfect because it um, is compatible with my old Apple Pencil. This is the Apple Pencil first gen. And um, as long as you buy the adapter that is USB-C to lightning bolt or whatever they call this type of end, you are perfect to use it with the iPad 10th gen. And if anybody's wondering why I didn't get an iPad Pro, I have a MacBook Pro and so I feel as though you don't need to have both. I don't think you need an iPad Pro and a MacBook Pro, at least for me. Um, I could see if maybe you're an artist or something and you use an iPad for like Procreate and that sort of thing, but I don't. And so a iPad 10th gen, perfect for my needs 
and um, a much better price, I think, than like an iPad Pro. And then the last thing that just came in the mail, it got delivered to my apartment from Amazon. I don't typically like to use Amazon, but sometimes you need to Amazon things like a new iPad case. And I love this iPad case. The color is sky blue and I just think it's really beautiful. And I love that it has a slot for the Apple Pencil because to me, I like to keep them all in the same place. So this is the iPad. And I guess with that, um, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and happy back to school. I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.